Seth Everett, NBC Sports Radio, MLB Insider, joins us to talk some baseball on Tuesdays. Uh, Phillies lose again last night. Seth, it's been painful at the ballpark, man. They've lost 18 of 22. It looks like Matt Clintech's uh, bunch here is regressing a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was peaks and valleys. The league is making ad, uh, adjustments, and this is why, you know, I answered the question when I did, when they were doing very well in the month of April, and I said, you know, how long can this go? How far can this happen? And I, all I was like, just just take one day at a time. This is, the you know, eventually the cream rises to the top. Um, it, it's, it's not necessarily uh, meaning that, you know, I'm giving up on everything for the, for the, for the franchise and, and that this is not a step forward. I just thought that, uh, it was too much too soon, and, you know, this is kind of more like reality. Yeah, you know, one thing uh, we talked about this yesterday on the show was uh, they're kind of in this pattern of rebuilding. They want to replenish the farm system, but here we are. They have not been a very good team now going on, what, five years? And do you feel like there's somebody there to kind of sink your teeth into? Like there's not that guy that really makes you feel like, man, this guy or these couple of pitchers are really going to turn this team around quickly. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird, and you know, it goes back to the thing we said. You know, I'm going tonight, and uh, you know, I, I'll walk around the stands and see, you know, Chase Utley jerseys and yeah. Jimmy Rollins jerseys. It's, it just doesn't exist uh, just yet, and it, it's something that I thought, you know, all those things are kind of the fruits of the labor. And, you know, you look at the roster and say that there's some good young talent, but nobody that all of a sudden now I'm putting on the cover of a program. You're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Seth Everett's with us here. So when do teams start to look at making changes during the court? I mean, you got Michael Saunders batting eighth now on this team. Uh, you know, uh, the Phillies have some talent at the minor league level. When would you like to see Matt Clinton? He said yesterday, look, you got to be patient. You got to – we hear that line, but – when is it time for him to start saying, all right, Michael Saunders, that experiment, that's over. Let's start to see some other guys. Do you think there's like a date or a time when he starts to do some things? Uh, I mean, if for this team, I would I would just listen to offers. I, I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that the Phillies get much better by trading Michael Saunders. I, I, I'm no, no offense to Michael or his family, but uh, I, I don't know necessarily that that does a lot. I, same thing with Jeremy Ellickson. I've heard that. Uh, mentioned, but um, you know, to tell you the truth, Pat Neshek would get uh, some interest. Um, you know, only in the sense that he's pitched in the postseason before, so uh, th- th- there's there's definitely something that would help from that. Uh, but outside of that, it's not a roster. Think think about it this way: there's not even a Ryan Braun on this roster. You know what I mean? The the Brewers are talking, even though they're in first place. People are like, you know, there's going to be offers for Ryan Braun, and it can bring us three more young players and. That doesn't exist on the on the Phillies roster. So I, again, I'm not trying to belittle the Mikael Franco's or the Freddie Galvises of, of the bunch, but I, I don't see what they command in return. Yeah, and, and maybe not even in a trade situation. Just uh, hey, guess what? Uh, we're going to move on, Michael Saunders. Thank you for your service. Uh, we would like to see but, uh, somebody else. Yeah, yeah, but you know, to me, that's 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 running around in circles. You know, if you want to call up some kids, you know, towards the end of the year, then it's it's a little early to do that. All right, uh, I want to get your take. The Phillies, by the way, they're three, four, five guys are hitting two ten. That's Franco, who you mentioned uh, to start the season. Odubel Herrera, uh, who the Phillies just gave that contract extension to. Uh, Franco and Herrera, are they not the players? Maybe the Phillies were hoping or envisioned from those two guys. Uh, Franco, they put a lot on his plate. They obviously signed Herrera uh, because they they thought he was uh, a, maybe a, you know four years long term part of their plan. Are they not the guys the Phillies were hoping for? Uh, no, I, I, you know, the the one thing I'll say about uh, those guys, especially Herrera, is you know I I don't necessarily know that there's there's been a book about these guys yet. I know that you know the city of Philadelphia is an impatient city, and you want your baseball team to be better. I just I haven't I haven't heard an overly ton of of people saying they're not going to stick to a program that they they essentially have only been doing for a year and change. I mean, it, it really hasn't been. You know, if you think about the Phillies over the course of this decade, it's been more about the decline than the than the ascension. And uh, the ascension has just started, and, you know, people want to see the results of that. You know, it's what's tough for the Phillies to me is you see the Twins and you see the, uh, the, the Brewers and you see the Rockies and you say, well, why can't we be that? Yeah. Twins are a good one. Uh, that's a team first place. You, you, you open up your newspaper today. If you still do that, you see the Twins in first place. What a uh, uh, how did that happen? You know, it's like wait, wait, huh? The Twins are in first place. 
Who picks up a newspaper? That's why I said if you still do that. <laughs> when was the last time you touched a newspaper? Ah, uh, that's a great question. I don't, and I'm a big proponent of the newspaper. I just, it's, uh, I, I my, feel, I, I feel uh, bad saying it. You're making my, me feel bad, man. My, my grandmother-in-law, my, my kid's great grandmother, <laughs> uh, she gets a newspaper. That's when I looked at the newspaper, and I, I, I thought it was funny because it, it's, it still looks like, like I feel like I'm in a time warp. Except everybody in the newspaper has their Twitter handles on the articles. <laughs> Seth Everett, NBC Sports Radio, is with us. Uh, I want to get your – because Trout's a local guy, and when you open your newspaper, if you still do that – no, when you go, when you look at his numbers, 350, 14 homers, 34 RBI, 31 runs, 9 stolen bases uh, at the quarter pole. I think it's just because he's on the West Coast. Can you just kind of, as a baseball guy, tell our listeners what – it put in perspective what kind of player this guy is and is becoming and still can be. I think we somewhat are now taking it for granted because we don't get to see him all the time. But he's on the East Coast right now, so I think it deserves uh, a little bit of a mention of, of what kind of season this guy is having. Yeah, they have apps for that. You can you can see him in, in <laughs> on highlights. Uh, it, it's it's pretty amazing. It's not like the old days when uh, Ricky Henderson used to come in with the Oakland A's and people would be like, "Oh my goodness, he's in the National League City." Um, <laughs> so the I, the idea that uh, Trout, hey, look, he's a great player. He's a nondescript great player. He's got a nice personality. He took a hometown discount. He uh, gave up, I think it's three years of free agency. Uh, he's not going anywhere. The Angels love him. The uh, community loves him. Uh, he seems like a really nice guy. He's a Jersey guy, so I'm a fan and. Um, you know, it just seems like a nice guy. He doesn't come with the uh, the brashness that Bryce Harper comes with. Right. I uh, just he, he seems like he's a real docile guy, and uh, you know he's he's an enjoyable player to watch. If you watch him, he's got a lot of skills. And uh, you know I, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to you know he's not Derek Jeter, he's not Alex Rodriguez, he's not even Nomar. You know he's just he's a he's a guy. He's a he's a nice outfielder. He's a he's a he's a good young player. And a lot of people say he's the face of baseball, and that just doesn't make a good statement for baseball because too many people don't know anything about him for him to be a face of baseball. Yeah, I, I think, you, you know, because he plays out in L.A. and uh, or Anaheim uh, and they're not the best team, I think you're a little bit uh, right about that. The fact that this, those numbers I just read off, I don't know that we truly uh, understand the impact that, uh, that he has, but uh, Mike Trout is uh, – uh, having an unbelievable season for those of you not paying attention. Seth Everett, NBC Sports Radio, MLB Insider. And, of course, uh, you can check out NBC Sports Radio and uh, Seth Everett on Tuesdays here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. All right, my friend, we'll do it again. See you, man. See you. Yep. Take care. Seth Everett, everybody, here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN.